I want to talk about what if tonight. What if? You see, we've had a great history up until this point here at Rot Nations. But the fact is, there is so much more to do. And the future depends on you. God is depending on you. People are depending on you tonight. People that are so lost and so confused in our cities and towns all through Europe and through the world. They're literally depending on what happens to you in these next four days and then beyond that for the rest of your life. What if you left on Saturday night believing the dreams that God has placed in your heart? What if you left on Saturday night ready to face the challenges, ready to overcome the difficulties in your own private world? What if you began to live a victorious life so that 10 years from now, 10 years from now, this would be common throughout Great Britain. Stadiums would be filled with young people. What if the future of Great Britain, what if the future of Germany, what if the future of Holland depends on you? Hey, I've got a news flash. It does. It depends on you. You are not the future of the church. You are the church right now. You are the church. You won't one day wake up when you're 99 years old and suddenly realize, oh, Sunday, and get your cane out and sit with all the old people. I think I'm part of the church now. I'm almost there. Just give me a few more weeks. I'm dragging my backside and now I'm going to be in the church. No. God knew he needs, he needs you in the church now when you've got your energy, when you've got your strength, when you've got your vitality. He needs you right now to be totally in the Word of God this week because your future depends on it. You don't need to be outside at the skate park when the meetings are on. You don't need to be thinking about what comes next in the worship. You need to encounter Jesus. Why? Because young people are relying on you. They're relying on us. And I wanted to take you with Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 as I kick this off. Because this was what started us off here at Rot Nations many years ago. And the Bible says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Who's got a big imagination? What if you grew your imagination this week? What if you begin to entertain thoughts of the greatness of Jesus Christ? Not the greatness of you, but the greatness of what your God can do through your life. What if you looked at your friends and your family and your church and begin to ask each other, what if we could build a rock nation in our own city? What if we could have a move of God like this on our school campuses? What if? Because in 2001, we had a big what if. And we've had 10 years of this. And I'm realizing now that that power of imagination that we had back then was challenged. It was challenged. We had a big imagination and a big dream. And when you have a big imagination and you have a big dream, guess what else? You have big problems. You have big challenges. And some of you think if you have a big problem or a big challenge, you're doing something wrong. No, challenges mean you're doing something right. Challenges mean that you're on the right track. You don't leave Jesus in your challenge. You find Jesus through the challenge. Did you hear me? You don't lose Jesus. You don't lose sight of Jesus. Where are you, Jesus? Don't you know how hard it is? No, in the hard times, that's when you go to God. In the hard times, that's when you go, I don't have the strength to make it. But I know this, if I wait upon the Lord, I'm going to rise again and I'm going to soar. I'm going to fly. I'm going to dream again. And God needs you to fly. He needs you to dream again. He needs to raise your expectations tonight. Anything is possible because of Jesus Christ. God can do anything through your life. When you start to realize, God has chosen me. God has destined me. God has given me a plan. He's given me a hope and a future. I am the future. There's nobody else who's going to take my place. I'm up for it. I'm ready for it. Here I am. I'm going for God. Where is that spirit amongst young people today? Where is that? 
So many young people say, I'm bored. I don't know how to get into the things of God. Well, that's what Rock Nations is all about. We are going to believe in you. We're going to invest in you. We're going to preach. We're going to lead worship. By Saturday night, you're going to be so pumped up. You're going to be going out of this place, and you're going to transform your local church. Who's up for that? I'm up for that. So, God gave me a word for this generation. He didn't give me a word for this generation for the conference because God, I think God doesn't operate like that. When God gives you a word that's life-changing, it wakes you up at night. You go to bed at night thinking about it. You wake up in the morning thinking about God's word, God's specific word. In your conversations with your friends and your mates, you start talking about God's word, about what he's saying to you. And God gave me one of these words 12 years ago. 12 years ago, God began to speak to me about what God could do through a generation. And he spoke to me in 1 Kings chapter 20. I want you to look at that. 1 Kings chapter 20. And this story in 1 Kings chapter 20 is about a huge battle. And the battle lines were drawn up between two sets of people. God's people and the enemy people. The enemy was called the Arameans. And the Arameans had a king. And the story goes in 1 Kings chapter 20 that there was a massive battle and the young officers won the battle and the battle was finished and everybody was happy they went back home to their own villages and their own towns and they started doing the regular life again and after that moment when they went back home and this is when I'm gonna pick the story up tonight 1st Kings 20 verse 22 this is what happens and the prophet came to the king of Israel and said to him go strengthen yourself take note and see what you should do for in the spring of the year the king of Syria will come up against you again think about that after the battle won here comes the word of God after the battle is finished God shows up and he says hey guys don't you understand on Saturday on Saturday night when you go home yeah I'm talking to you already about what happens when you go home on Saturday when you go home after the conference is finished when the stage is quiet and the band's gone and you get back home tired and you get off your buses and your coaches and you go back to your own bedrooms that's when the battle starts that's when the real work starts on the Sunday morning and on the Monday morning I'm gonna speak about what's gonna happen to you next week next month next year you see the truth is you don't know what the future is going to bring you don't know what's going to happen next month you might have an idea you might have a plan but you don't know the challenges that are going to come so because you don't know what the future is going to bring the best thing you can do this week is to know the God of the future the best thing you can do is to encounter who Jesus is and he will prepare you for the future he will be with you in the future he'll be ready to walk with you and that's what this prophet was trying to get over to these young people he was trying to say to them look get ready strengthen yourself my first point tonight is this the future depends on you going it doesn't depend on you staying here at Rock Nations we love you we love all of you we wish you could be with us more but you're gonna have to go home the future depends on you going. If you lived all your life in the Abundant Life Center, Main Hall, Auditorium, you would not be very happy. You wouldn't. The future depends on you going. By Saturday night, I promise you that the God pit will not be the aroma of Christ. I promise you. You loved it tonight. You're jumping around. But by Saturday, when somebody says in the worship team, could everybody please lift their hands, you're going to be going... I don't know if I want somebody to lift their hands. You know, and if you stayed here much longer, you'd be starving to death. Literally. You'd want food. You'd want clothing and you'd want shelter. The future depends on going. And that's why when God says go, you need to listen. When God says you need to go, he's trying to make a point to you. And when God said to God's people, look, you need to go. You need to go back to your home. You need to go back to your villages. Go back to your families. He goes on to say this in verse 28. Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver all this great multitude into your hand. 
Listen to this. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Do you know God as I am? Do you know Him as I am? Do you know Him as an ever-present help in times of trouble? Do you know how to go to God? Do you know how to do that in the midst of difficulty? Do you know how to go to God yourself? Do you know how to get into God's presence? Do you know how to take the Word of God and apply it to your own life? And then go out and change people around you? Because that's what knowing the I am God is all about. See, when God started to reveal Himself over history, He revealed Himself to Moses, Exodus chapter 4. And He revealed Himself to Moses. And He said, Moses, you will go and you will deliver a nation. You will deliver your generation. And Moses said, me? Me? What if they don't listen to me? What if they're not listening? What if they're stubborn? What if they give excuses? What if they say it won't happen? And he came up with all this list of reasons. See, here's the truth today. Our youth culture, they don't know that God is the God of the valleys. They don't know that. They see depression. They see rioting. They see prejudice. They see trouble. And they don't know that God is the God of the valleys. They would recognize, most people would recognize that God does occasional good things. Occasionally God intervenes. Occasionally He does a good thing in somebody's life. But God, walking 24-7, Emmanuel, God with us, seven days a week, 365 days a year, for the rest of your life. Now that is something people don't understand. In the challenges of life, when it gets tough, when you go through hard times, listen, that's when we need to go to God. Do you think Jesus was stressed out in the Garden of Gethsemane? Do you think he wanted to give up? I think he was tempted to give up. Do you think Paul wanted to give up when he was shipwrecked? Do you think people here at Abundant Life want to give up from time to time? Well, I'm telling you, we do sometimes when we see the need in our generation. In our local church, over 60% of the young people that come are coming from homes where they have no stable environment. They don't have a dad in their environment. Here's the thing we've got to do. We've got to go and we've got to embrace others. We can't just stay comfortable in our four walls of church of Rot Nations. Rot Nations, we're not going to stay comfortable in these four walls of abundant life tonight. No, God is going to send you to a generation. He's going to send you to the brokenhearted. And when you get there, you better be strong. You better be strong. That's where we need to learn this principle tonight. I am the Lord. I am the God who heals you. Do you know God as the healer God? Do you know Him as the healer God? Do you know God as a provider in your world tonight? Do you know Him as a provider? Some of you, I know some of you, you're believing one day God will provide you with the most gorgeous girl on the planet. You're believing. You're praying. You're fasting. One day, she will appear. She will just appear. She'll just drop out of the sky like an angel. And you'll be like, Hey, baby, it's me. I am your dream. I am ready for you. I have the guns, the body. I've got it all. The heart, the spiritual heart of a lion. You're ready. You're believing. The girls are like, please, please, well, you just get over yourselves. You know, and you're like, you're going out in this place and you're thinking, well, one day, one day, and your imagination is wandering and thinking and you're in all these areas. Listen, let me speak to you tonight. You need a bigger dream. You need a bigger dream. You need to get your eyes off of you and on to the right things. And I'll tell you what the right thing is. The right thing is focusing on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, man, if we can focus on Jesus, everything else will find its rightful place. And when God says to you, go and strengthen yourself, my second point tonight, your future depends on you going and strengthening yourselves. Your future depends on it. Other people depend on it. When you go, you're going to encounter challenges, so you better learn how to strengthen yourself. If you're ill tonight physically, hey, fill out those prayer requests. But you need to know this. If you're ill physically, God can heal you. God can sort you out. And He can bring this incredible sense of presence after, into your life. But then after you get healed, you better have a healthy lifestyle. 
You better develop a way to grow yourself strong in life so that when you wake up in the morning, you can't wait for the day to start. 